I'm going to do a video interview with Maddie from the Speed Thrash band Prisoner from Serbia. Uh, to date, they have uh, an EP and a full album. Uh, the EP is The Upcoming Devastation. Uh, small, small label. Only 100 were made. But I believe you can get it on their Bandcamp site yeah, for a download. Uh, there were three tracks on it. And on the three tracks, I believe all three of the tracks ended up on their full length, which came out in 2015 called See the Scars. This one, I believe they made 500 copies, and it's on Slaney Records. So I have sent Matty some questions, um, just in, in general about the band, but also kind of about his... Um, his path to playing in a metal band, uh, path to becoming a guitarist, and uh, there's a lot of really cool information in here, so uh, sit back and enjoy uh, my little conversation across the oceans with Maddie of Prisoner. How old are you, and what age were you when you picked up the guitar, and what influenced you to actually decide to play the guitar? Well, uh, I'm 21 years old and uh, I was six when I picked up the guitar for the first time. And uh, the first thing that I saw and heard were some Spanish stuff, you know, like Gypsy Kings, Paco de Lucia, all that, a lot of stuff. You know, that was my first contact with the guitar. And uh, I liked it. And that's how I started to play. As you grew up, what bands or groups did you listen to, whether it was metal or other styles? Can you remember the first heavy metal or metal band that you heard that got you into metal? And if so, what album was it that you heard that got you into metal? Well, the first uh, rock and roll thing that I heard in my life uh, was ACDC and their first album, Dirty Deeds, Not A Cheap. My father gave me the cassette and I still get it. It's a great album. But first heavy metal thing that I heard uh, was Iron Maiden and their album Peace of Mind. First song that I remember from that period uh, is Flight of Pickers. I really liked it. After Iron Maiden, I heard uh, Wasp and their album Inside the Electric Circus. I first uh, I, I first discovered that band uh, because of cover of that album, you know, where where, where Blake Lawless. Tiger print or something like that and I asked my father hey what's this this looks amazing and he said ah, doesn't matter it's crap I said okay but I asked him to play that record to me and I liked it you know that the sound of his voice those guitars those songs it's it's a great album after all and uh, I still like it I know you're located in Serbia today, uh, but is that where you're from, or did you move there from another country? If so, as you grew up in the country you're from, how easy or difficult was it to get music that you enjoyed uh, to listen to? And did you have any local record stores or any places that you were able to purchase music, or was it difficult to be able to actually access physical music? Yeah, I'm born in Serbia and I live here my whole life. I started to discover um, some uh, heavier stuff in 2006. And uh, in that time I was buying a Serbian edition of Metal Hammer. And uh, that was uh, my my main source for, uh, you know, discovering some, some new stuff for me. And uh, our local record stores, they don't have that much of heavy stuff. You know, you can find Metallica, you can find Iron Maiden, you can find Slayer, but you can find some more obscure stuff and more underground stuff. Like you know, you know, I was really, I was really surprised when I found uh, "Pleasure to Kill" by Creator there. I was really surprised when I discovered that they have, uh, they have uh, Morbid Tales by Celtic Frost and all the stuff. You know, it's really hard, hard to find stuff like that here. For example, I like this section and I want to buy their albums, but uh, I can find it here, anywhere. And that's a problem for me. And uh, about five or six years ago, I discovered some kind of uh, 
a second hand record shop and uh, I bought uh, many albums there and uh, you know unfortunately me and uh, many other people here we are forced to download stuff from internet we don't like it I personally don't like that shit you know because you don't have quality you, you don't have that uh, I don't know that's digital bullshit you you it doesn't have a world for you it's just like virtual information but when I go ab abroad uh, I, I like uh, to go and uh, to find some uh, you know second hand shop and uh, bought uh, and buy some stuff here you know it's really sad situ situation for uh, for record collectors in Serbia there are all types of heavy metal you've got the hair bands you've got glam rock you've got hard rock heavy metal thrash metal speed metal power metal black metal death metal grindcore and so on and so forth what is your favorite style of heavy metal and are there any band or bands that you really enjoy the most and do you have a favorite metal band of all time you know i like uh, every subgenre of metal and uh, my favorite bands are Iron Maiden, Metallica and Sepultura. My favorite subgenre, I think it's thrash metal because it has uh, aggression, the melody and uh, complex substructures in, at the same time. And uh, my, my favorite uh, subgenre besides thrash metal is uh, heavy metal and especially New Wave of British Heavy Metal. I think that's the best music in the world and uh, the most important thing that happened in uh, rock and roll and uh, in pop popular culture, you know. There are some, there are many great bands there beside Iron Maiden, you know, in Saxon, you know, like uh, Angel Witch, uh, Raven, uh, Virtue, uh, Witchfinder General, uh, Witchfinder... There, 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 there's, there's really a bunch of uh, great bands there and uh, I think the big problem is uh, that that uh, today metal musicians and metal fans uh, doesn't know anything about uh, New Age British Heavy Metal and uh, you know that that's the that's the really that's the really dangerous for music because uh, people people don't know their roots and uh, that's that's why uh, we have uh, uh, that much of uh, crap music today because uh, people lost the sense of melody, they lost the sense of uh, natural sounds, they, they lost the sense of for the many, many things that are important in this genre. And uh, I, like, uh, I like black metal a lot, and my favorite band is uh, Battery, you know, their, their first four albums, that is a great, great beginning for the genre. I like uh, Marduk, I like Immortal, I like uh, Mayhem. They're the, really the, the sickest band in the world. I like Satyricon. Uh, I like Emperor. You know, there is uh, many, many great. There are many great bands in the genre, and I like some uh, some uh, local black metal black metal bands. You know, like The Stone. They're really great. They uh, <clears throat> they have seven great albums. I like uh, Triumphal. They are great. Uh, I like also May Result. Uh, I think that they disbanded something like that and, and uh, the guitarist from uh, The Stone and May Result, Kozinik, he has his uh, solo project and it's a strange mixture of uh, black and doom metal and it's, it's really exciting, it's, it, sound, it sounds really fresh and uh, not so long time ago I, b I bought his, uh, <coughs> his uh, new EP, it's called Dead Gives Unto Life and uh, I recommend it to the people. It's it's really it's really great, and it's really strange music. Maybe it's not for um, for everybody, but uh, if if you if if you like some uh, extreme stuff and some some darker stuff, then I think the Cosmic is for you. Can you remember the name of the first band that you ever played in? What style of music was it, and what was the name of that band? And how old were you when you joined that band? Prisoner is the first band that I ever formed, and uh, I was 16 years old at that uh, that moment. And uh, before that, I played classical guitar, you know, 
I uh, finished uh, the primary and uh, secondary music school, I played classical guitar, I studied it, you know. And uh, at, at the age of 16 I bought my first electric guitar and uh, shortly after that I found Brazil. The band has been around since around 2011, according to Metal Archives. Uh, how steady has the lineup been? Has there been a lot of lineup changes in that time, or has it been really consistent? Yeah, there were a lot of uh, lineup changes, especially in that early stadium of the band. And uh, we, always, we always had a problem with the uh, bass players, because we never find one who is uh, good enough on his instrument and uh, who is the uh, right person for the job, you know. We always had a problem with uh, responsible band members and uh, something like that, you know. But at the end of uh, 2014, Goran joined the band and uh, that was it. Our, our problem of the bass player is solved. Unfortunately, a few months ago, uh, our drummer Nikola and second guitarist Stefan, they left the band due to the artistic differences and, you know, we, we find the new members and uh, we're ready to continue our story. In addition to playing guitar for Prisoner, you also play guitar for a, another band called Merciful Angel. And it looked like that band has been formed since 2015. What made you decide to join or start a second band? Well, uh, that story with Merciful Angel started, uh, you know, last year, in 2015. And, uh, it wasn't uh, an intention for me to be, you know, the consistent member of the band. I joined on the, I you know, about uh, three or four weeks before their first gig. I just wanted to help them because uh, they didn't have the second guitar player at the moment and uh, I offered them help and, uh, you know, the time, the time has passed and they said, you know, actually, Philip, the second guitarist said, hey, I wanted to join the band. Do you want, the, are you interested? I said, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm here. So being the guitarist in two separate bands, do you also have a regular job? If so, what do you do for, for that regular job? How difficult is it to get time off when you have a gig that you're gonna play with either band? And how do you balance all three? No, I don't have a regular job. Unfortunately, I'm still a student. I, I'm studying the railway college. But uh, when it comes to jobs, you know, uh, whenever I find some job, I'm going to do it because I need money, you know, for uh, for a gigging, for a recording, for you know, new strings, for rehearsals, and a lot of stuff. Uh, a few months ago, I worked in the cleaning company, and uh, sometimes. Uh, it was, you know, it's really hard sometimes to uh, arrange all the stuff, you know, the college, the job, and the uh, rehearsals with two or three bands, you know. And, uh, you know, the boss, they, uh, he, he, he could call me and, and, and said, you know, hey, you got, to, you got to get here in the s seven in the morning, you know, and uh, you work both shifts. And I was like, that's a card that I, I, I can't hear rehearsal tonight, you know, and that, that was a problem. And um, in June, I, I quit the job because, uh, because they, I, I said for a gig, you know, for a few months earlier, and it was like, okay, do it. But, you know, the day before the gig, they said, uh, we have a job here tomorrow, and, you know, the whole company has to be here. I said, I can't do that because... Uh, I have a very important gig tomorrow and uh, I can't be there, I can't be here. And, and they said, okay, it's up to you. Do you come tomorrow or you quit? I said, fuck off, I quit. Of all the songs that you've recorded and written for either Prisoner or Merciful Angel, do you have a favorite song that you've written and recorded? And if so, what is that song and why? Yeah, sure, I have my personal favorites on our first album. And those songs are The Beast in the Mirror and Lifeless. From, from the musical point of view, those songs are representing everything that this band is about. You know, it represents our style. And uh, from the lyrical point of view, those are really, really personal stories about, you know, fighting against, you know, your inner demon and uh, 
people around you who are not who, who are telling you what to do who are who, who, who are trying to tell you what you can what you can say what you can say how to look how to dress and all the stuff we personally don't need that kind of shit you know and uh, we want to live our lives how we want to live it you know and uh, for the merciful angel i think that uh, my my personal favorite for now is maker that song uh, musically represents the style of the band and uh, from the lyrical side uh, it's it's about our society who is living uh, through through religion you know because uh, since since we are, we are born we are, we they, they, our parents and uh, our our society they, they were teaching us you know what how we how we must you know act on something like that because uh, we should be afraid of some figure in the sky you know and uh, as you know we were growing up we 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 we, we saw that uh, that that those stories are bullshit you know because uh, you know where where is that maker when when we need him you know and uh, on the other side uh, that the story that has been told in that song is about you know how how religion uh, how, how religion uh, fabricates our way of life you know and uh, you know ju- just li- just read the lyrics and uh, the, he he he's shown tr- his true form the maker has moved on and practically he doesn't exist can you talk a little bit about the writing process for either band is it a situation where you guys get together uh, for rehearsals and just jam, and if you come up with a cool riff, you try and throw that riff together into a song? Do you each write separately and send things to each other? Uh, is one person responsible for writing music, one for lyrics? Uh, how's that writing process work, and how long of a process is that from start to finish just to write one song? Emil writes the lyrics while me and Stefan, while he was in the band, uh, we, uh, we, we wrote the music. The majority of music is mine, but Stefan also gave a few really good songs that are now on our first album. We, we, we uh, you know, we worked separately, you know, I, I was sitting home and uh, I was playing the guitar and uh, I created some riffs and then I re- re- record th- those riffs and I sent to him and, and I said, you know, hey, take a listen. I I created th- those riffs now and he said, okay. And uh, he he sometimes he likes it, he, sometimes he doesn't like like it. It's 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 normal. And he he also sent he sent me his ideas and uh, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't like it. But uh, but we we work together. On, on some uh, crucial parts, you know, but uh, there is there is one song that that we wrote uh, together, you know, his and my riffs in, in, in the same place. Uh, that that's the lifeless, you know, and uh, it's really it's really a colorful song. Up till now, you've only played shows in Serbia mainly. How important and how significant would it be for you to be able to get to Europe? or even to the United States to play some shows. And how big of an impact do you think that would have on the band? Um, have you looked into that? And what can, say, people watching this interview that have some contacts or uh, any uh, expertise in that field do to help with that process to maybe make that a reality? You know, I think it's not possible to go out of our country on tour anything like that because uh, when you live in, in Serbia you have really really big problems with the money and uh, you know financial issue but uh, I think that uh, one maybe the most important thing for the band is to go on tour to play uh, to the new people and uh, let the people discover their music and uh, I think that's that's the main that's the main uh, main reason why the people uh, like some new bands because they heard it live as a support act for some uh, bigger band something like that and 
yeah, it's it's a, it's a really big thing, but it's it's not possible for for us now. Maybe in two or three years, but not now. But if anybody wants to to get in contact with us and uh, make uh, make and organize our gig anywhere, he can uh, he can try and contact us at our Facebook page, and uh, we'll try to make a deal. So with everything that you do, what does Maddie do for his own personal time and for his own relaxing um, downtime? Do you have any hobbies? Uh, do you enjoy some sports? Do you, you like movies, going to movies, watching movies? Is there a type of movie you like? Uh, just going to bars, hanging out, just hanging out with friends, family? What is it that you like to do in your spare time? Well, I'm into music even if I'm not in the studio or on the stage. I like to go to the concerts, to uh, local gigs and all that stuff. And uh, I, I, I'm hanging out with my uh, bandmates and uh, people who are, you know, who are coming to our gigs and listen to our music and stuff like that. But besides music, I, I really like to read comics, you know. Dylan Dog is my favorite comic and uh, I like it because uh, it, it, it has... Uh, it has, uh, you know, like morbid fantasy, you know, like scenes of horror and all that stuff. But it also has some uh, philosophical points of view, and uh, I think it's great. And uh, I, I really like to collect music, you know. I don't have uh, that much of CDs and vinyls like you do, but uh, I'm collecting the things that I really like, you know. I, I have uh, the whole Iron Maiden discography. I have uh, a lot of lot of stuff, you know, and uh, I'm buying uh, and I'm supporting the domestic scene, you know. There are many many great bands here in Serbia, and uh, I really I really enjoy their music, and I'm going on their concerts and all that stuff. Maddie, I want to take uh, a moment to thank you very much for um, the opportunity to send you these questions, and for you taking the time to answer these questions. I know you've got a lot on your plate, a lot going on, uh, but I truly appreciate it. Uh, it's really awesome that you took the time to do this. Um, really, honestly, what I'm looking for is just to help um, bands that I think are really awesome and really need to get out there and their name out there more, uh, the ability to do so. And if even this small little thing like this little interview can help get your name out there to more people, I want to do my part to help out. I've always been a metal fan. Um, from the moment I listened to you guys' albums, uh, I have been totally impressed with the music. And uh, I really hope you guys the best and wish you well. Hope you can make it to the U.S. If you get anywhere close to the Midwest, you're going to see my ugly mug in the front row. Thanks again, Maddie. Have a great day. No, thank you for giving me the chance to talk to, to, talk to the world about my bands and my work and all the stuff. And uh, I'm really glad that there are still the people who, who like to, you know, promote and uh, support some uh, lesser known bands and uh, bands from the underground because, uh, you know, those legends that we are still listening, you know, they will unfortunately die and they will, you know, retire from touring and recording an albums. So there has to be some legacy and uh, I think that uh, we who are in the under, underground, that we are, you know, the next big thing. But you have to support that next big thing to be big. And uh, thank you, thank you for this interview and for giving me my time. And um, I have the special message for all of you people who saw this interview. And uh, I have to say, keep loving the heavy metal because that's simply the best thing on the world keep supporting the things you like the bands you like the musicians you like keep promoting that no bullshit attitude because that's the real spirit of rock and roll keep moshing keep stage diving keep drinking and uh, keep having a great time bye